All right, here we are, moving right along on to game number five and playing on the blue side for Team Fire is three-time world participant five. If you count the analyst desk, it's double lift. I like it. En la otra esquina, representando un jugador de China, un jugador con complejo de Gotbi. Les. Very nice, very nice. Que comience la batalla! Back to the castle desk, Crepo. Another 1v1. I think actually it's been going uh, pretty fast yeah. so far. There have been so many uh, games here ending way before the 100 CS mark. This one is actually the one I look forward to the most. Yeah. Because it is double lift. Tell me why. Made it to the final last time. Lost to Bjergsen in some mirror matches, so it was very difficult, especially the Z versus He got Ted. baited into a Z he match and a Velcro. Definitely did. It tells us a lot about double lift. Great mechanics. Takes challenge. Not the best decision making. Or maybe the decision making was a little bit off, but Wayless is obviously a guy a lot of people will remember as, as God V from, from Worlds last yep. year, from, from LGD, where he had such a poor tournament. Like Varus Arrows, they went the wrong way, and everything just went wrong for him. This year in the LPL, He's had fantastic periods of time, uh, periods uh, of play, and less fantastic. Really terrible ones, to be honest. Uh, most of the summers, though, he was actually very good, yep. uh, especially towards the end of it. So I really want to see what he can do because mechanically he is such a gifted player, but so is Double F. And Double F, uh, honestly, was fantastic last year in one v one. So much as we like to joke about him because he can take them, he is extremely proficient, especially in trades on AD carries. He yep. really understands when is the right time to go for a minion and when is the right time to go for a trade. And uh, we get to see uh, some of the AD carries being removed, obviously, because you are playing as a mid laner versus an AD carry. Syndra has to be taken away. Something like LeBlanc is, is something that Wayless can play, but he also has a pocket pick. He played a lot of Corgi mid lane in the LPL, and I think Corgi is just fine in the 1v1 map if you don't feel too comfortable playing like one of the available AD carries. The problem with Corgi is, I would say, maybe mana. But Dana if you optimize true. your poke again on minions and champions at the same time, you can little down the sustain game. One final ban remaining here. I like that we're getting rid of Hopefully we get a cannon ban so we can still see things spiced up. Yeah, some new things all the time. I think there's been a lot of diversity so far, which has been very interesting to watch. Things like Tom Kench is still available. Not expecting any of these two guys to play it. That one was probably not needed versus double lift. Wrong guy in the bot lane, I feel, with that ban. And it might be setting up for the LeBlanc pick that he wants to go for, though. If you play versus Draven, the, the dash cancel is embedded in that kit. Obviously, other AD carries can't do that. Because if you screw a LeBlanc out of her W advancement, obviously, she's going to have a hard time. Would be great to finally see LeBlanc here. She's a pick that's obviously banned quite often yep. after the rework. She's Can definitely, fly. definitely the strongest assassin uh, right now but too strong here and there as well. And, and it is a champion that Wayless has played so, so many times in the past. Always been a great assassin player. He's also very known for his Diana, but it's such a risky pick in this 1v1 mode because you have to just all in basically. And he yeah. might not want to risk it in the first game he's playing. Yeah, also a, ma a melee matchup that is very mana gated is going to be hard to play. Ooh. Oh. New Twitch could be very interesting for 1v1s. Yeah, one of the problems though in this matchup specifically is that when Twitch will throw down his poison, which is such a big part of stacking up the poisons, uh, the W, sorry, of stacking up the poisons for expansion in the early game, LeBlanc can obviously like jump out of it yeah. very, very easily. So it can be actually hard to get enough stacks on him. But she has to jump out of it defensively because if she, if Twitch plays, let's say, you know, that happens, you throw out your W, LeBlanc advances forward, she's playing in the minion wave as well, where she kind of has to fight the Twitch and the minions. And then if she goes backwards, she gets more stacks on the back end. Yeah, she should be able to out-trade him, though. If, he, if she actually gets in the face of the Twitch and his W is lying in the back where distortion mm -hmm. came from, that should be fine for, for Wayless here. It's definitely like the burst mage versus the AD carry who wants like longer trades, fully stack up the poison. Risky, risky choice from double F. But Twitch is super good right now. Level six actually introduces an interesting spike for Twitch because it just the sheer amount you can outrange LeBlanc with, making her kind of engage very predictable. She can just always close the gap so easily against the Twitch. Like, yes, he can outrage her for like one or two hits. I mean, that's, that might be enough. I mean, this champion is very squishy. Exhaust is king on the Howling Abyss. Yeah. Obviously, uh, 
Ignite comes out. There's double if not going for heal, obviously, because that gets countered by Ignite a lot on these matches. Remember, these guys usually have actual blind pick. That's why we very rarely see a heal. Double if makes it into the bush first. It gets That's really good. A few hits off, but again, Wailers can recall. Yeah, he can base, but having control of second brush is important. And Twitch poison. The poison actually making it harder for Wailers to recall. So by the time he's back at base now, minions should be ready to spawn and might cost him just a little bit in the end because there's the minions it doesn't matter that he's in time for experience it matters that he loses right to first engagement on the wave which means double if will have the push going and that is very needed for twitch yeah. if you push in an 80 carry like twitch he's gonna suffer and one of the big things especially uh, when one guy is slightly behind on how fast they make it to the middle is if you can make it into the second brush like the enemy's brush it's so easy for you to like weave in and get like again that green files gives extra auto attack on them making it much harder for them chain first from Wayless. Does deal a lot of damage if you get the second proc. It works if you're behind, because you know this, this AD carry is going to kind of start walk up on you. Like right there, but double still had the push. Notice how he did, once he's one minion ahead, he knows he can actually go for little trades in between as well. That's that strong from double -inch. Yeah, what double also can do in this matchup, uh, now that it's against an AP champion, is go Hexstringer. Of course. Which is so huge with Hexstringer, Barrier, Exhaust, like there's so many defensive tools against like a lot of burst from another champion, making it much easier for him to win trades. But that's obviously in 1300, 1400 gold. Yeah, we're also about to witness the, the main weakness of a LeBlanc pick is CSing on a turret. Really hard to do so if you're not having access to continuous mana pool. Yeah, we talked about how the tower works with the caster minions. With the melee minions, it's actually even more annoying because the tower will deal about 50% damage on the melee minions. So if you don't hit it at all, the tower will just take it down on the second shot. And there's nothing you can do against it. Wayless went for a W that lost at a minion at the same time and hit double lift but his E missed, which gives double the preferential trade. He needs to keep this wave position like this, though. He's waiting for the minion, to, the, the relic to spawn. He gets it. These guys obviously have practiced a metric ton of games, so they know exactly when this relic comes out. Yeah, the bank will keep missing uh, CS on the tower 100%. And also allowing double to throw the poison down exactly where he did it here. So Wayless has to decide between standing in the poison and getting the last hit. But double just took a oh, shot there. That's the problem. This poison will continuously give you tower aggro the second you step forward. Because Doublelift was setting up to punish Wayless when he went for a CS, but the tower triggered a lot earlier than he expected. And this was huge because Doublelift instantly used like Souls. Wayless kept his. He went for like a bait all in, where he goes for the summer spell, for a summoner spell, jumps instantly back, and now because he has distortion, he can close the gap again Ooh. with Exhaust. He can go for a fake base into Q. Oh, he tried to. Because the chain is down. If he Use the sweeper! There we go. Damn, I got so into that. Don't like, yell that loud, man. Yeah! You can hear. They're like really close. <laughs> got the spot. That's why you go with Sweeper. You actually can't go any ward trinkets anyway, because mm -hmm. they wouldn't make any sense on this map here. And Wayless again, he wants to jump in with Distortion, exhaust onto Double Lift, and try and all in him in that potential trade. But there is still barrier yeah. for the Twitch. Oh, this that is going to be a big time. Yeah, Second, the W misses here. The momentum shifts to Double Lift. The lane is neutral right here. Double Lift has access to the creeps earlier. Look, yeah, he's just going to use that W for wave clear. Uh, double F taking control again of the matchup. Definitely, but Wayless constantly moving forward. It seems like he just wants a bit of poke damage. Now Double F will have to be so careful because Wayless can actually engage and take him down. I like how Wayless is just playing like the poke game. It looks like he's all inning every time, but he instantly jumps back. Yeah, double F sitting on 1,200 gold. Going to base here. Bought a Dorn's Blade and then we're like, whoops, wrong item, sold it again. And of course, it's going towards Hexstringer. Wayless might have to just push this out and go back because he doesn't want to be this many items down. Okay. But once level six first, most likely. Reset the wave as well, but look at how annoying it is for LeBlanc. She never wants to use spells on the waves. Yeah, she's actually too far away from level six to get it before Double is back in this. Uh, Lanius, so he's not really losing out on anything, and he is going to get quite an advantage on CS. Yeah, he could actually just freeze here, too, to deny a couple of creeps. But again, this is not in the matchup where it goes to 100 CS. If this was a 100 CS matchup, a freeze would deny about four creeps by the time Wayless is back. But it would put you on the risk of then having to CS on a tower. You would only freeze if you have an AoE champion that then can then immediately clear out the wave. And now if you guys look at the items, you see double lift. Had to spend all his gold on actual items and no sustain in here other than what he gets from the Dorn's Blades here. Where Wayless actually managed to get some sustain with the potion and that can be very important when he's jumping in and poking and then jumping back and trying to out sustain a little bit. Well, we are looking at a minor experience advantage for Double Thought. This may just end 
Once he hits level six, he is super close right now. You guys can't see it from the camera. He's obviously blocking it. I really like that trade from Wayless there. He jumps in with the W, so he applies his signal of balance to passive now. Oh, we'll actually see if they're going all in. Three chains. He can go for it. Just go for it, man. One more hit. Almost too easy in the end. As soon as he got level six, yeah. jumps in. We hype it up. Minion wave positioning. Hex drinker timing. Didn't matter at all. The level six from Twitch. Oh, he knows. It's a great tool in team fights. In the 1v1, it I did mean, make a big difference. It's a great tool in 1v1s if you actually arrange somebody. If you, like, mindlessly walk up to a brush. Of course. If you pick a champion that can't, like, gap close and there's no snowball or ghost or anything. Yes. And he walked up to a brush. He canceled, like, <laughs> two auto attacks. He would have probably lost that trade no matter what. Wayless was on, like, 60% HP when the trade actually ended. So disappointing. Like, we build all these stories about, like, look what, how smart these players are. And then at the very end, they just, like, walk up to a level 6 LeBlanc guy. Yeah, I mean, uh, a LeBlanc pick as an assassin is supposed to kill 80 carries early on. And as you can see, Doublet never really had enough damage to threaten the LeBlanc. And he got him down to 50%. Basically, with that one, Wayless not even smiling. He's like, business as usual. I'm done. I've taken down Double Lift. And both North American players who made it to the final last year are out. In round one. In round one. Not good for Team Fire, but Team Ice. Oh my, they're doing And these are all good. kind of sub 50 game wins as well. We're, we're waiting, obviously, for Froggen uh, to hopefully show up at this 1v1 yeah. tournament, pick some Nasus. Luckily for us, he isn't here. No. Luckily for us, he is not here, but we have two guys on stage. They're here and they're ready to yell again.